Another week goes by and we have to wait once again for more House of the Dragon. What's going on everybody? My name is Zach and thank you so much for clicking on this. Today we're going to be discussing House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 2 in full spoilers. I'm not going to talk about every moment, but I am just going to give my overall review for this episode. And I always feel like talking about TV, it's a lot easier if I just happen to mention some spoilers. Now, as some preference, I did like the first episode of House of the Dragons, but when I went back and rewatched it once again for Season 2, I thought it was a little bit slower and not as big and bombastic as I expected it to be. It was a nice little recentering of where all the characters were after the events of season one's finale. But now jumping into episode two, I expected it to go a little bit further. And again, it kind of just laid out the pieces again of kind of layering out what's going on in this season. And where I'm starting to get with this season is overall the thought that just like Game of Thrones... I feel that season two of the original Game of Thrones series was one of the slower paced seasons, but also one of the more important seasons of it all. And the reason that I felt that was because it was very much the recentering of all the characters, where we will be following them and what challenges they might be going through. And obviously many seasons after that, some characters shifted pace, where they were going, where their arcs were going. But I found that season two was one of the more slower moments but also one of the more important seasons in general of establishing characters. And I'm starting to think that House of the Dragons is most likely going to do that, depending on how the rest of the season progresses. But within the first two episodes, that is where I'm feeling out. Now, I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. What was your favorite moment of this entire episode? What was your favorite scene? Who's your favorite character so far? How badly do you want Sir Christian Cole to die? Because I, I'm just, I'm over this fucking hypocrite. Like... He is like easily one of those characters that when you see his face, you just want to smack him so fucking hard and beat the shit out of him. Is it just me? Definitely leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's jump into this. So overall, this again comes off the events of Aegon's son being killed off in the episode that we saw before and all the revelations that kind of come out of this. Now, I found this episode to be more interesting compared to the first one overall. And I think a lot of that comes down to the character interactions and the character development that we get. It's still a slower paced episode, but just from the opening thing of how pissed off Aegon is and seeing the terrifying face in some of these characters, but also Christian and how he feels like in a way he sullied what he was doing. And, but, you know, and what he's doing with, of course, Alicent or Alicent and there's a lot of hypocritical things like I literally hate Cole so much specifically how he takes the twin brother and like it's pissed at him about his cape and then like bitches about how he wasn't there to protect but it's like motherfucker you should have been there but now you had to go get on Sullied and you know for the twin to just basically be like no you're gonna go there you're gonna kill Renera. you're gonna do what we want you to we want you to do and to see how that places out is very fascinating to me especially how that's established very early on. And then by the end of it, we see that play out. Now jumping into the rest of this and just kind of finishing out Cole and how this episode ends with, of course, him, Allison slapping him and them just deciding to have sex. And I, again, I just, I want this motherfucker to die so bad. Jumping into this though, we see how pissed off Renera is. And it feels like this episode had more of a balance on Team Green and Team Black and specifically how pissed she was at Damon because she knew that Damon did this. And that Damon, while he gave obvious instructions and they did not follow the instructions, it has now basically caused a war and a rift. Which again, Otto Hightower, very smartly, let's parade the body through the streets. Let's remind the citizens to be closer to the king and to hate Rhaenyra more. And I love that entire sequence of having Alicent and the queen paraded through the city with the dead body of the child. And that's just not enough for Aegon. Aegon decides, fuck you, fuck everyone. Let's kill all the rat catchers. Because he goes in there and tortures our man who just, before he's even tortured, just gives up all of the evidence to Mr. I Love Feet and Aegon. And the fact that we get all of that in one. And then, after parading, you kind of feel the sensibility of this entire town kind of shifting towards Aegon. Nope, kills all the rat catchers. And I think my favorite scene in this entire episode so far was that argument between 
um, Otto Hightower and Aegon. And I think all of the acting in that sequence was fucking great. Like, right, Reese Eifen, Eifen, I always mispronounce his name, incredible. He's always been great as Otto. He's, Otto's one of those characters that you, like, love to hate. Sometimes you want to punch him sometimes. He's speaking wisdom. And he overall has kind of tried to keep Aegon in line, understandably, with all the issues going on. And the fact that, you know, that entire sequence, and then he goes, my father chose me, and Otto's like, eh, you think that. And he takes the pin away and gives it to Sir Kristen Coles, who then follows up that great conversation with, again, her daughter. And for me, Otto is the one character that, while I hate a majority of Team Green and I want all of the high towers to die, I just want Renera back on the throne. Otto is one of the easy, even though he's slimy, very respectful characters that is trying to keep people in line. And now without him there, it's going to be very interesting to see where this further develops. And again, that is my favorite thing of this episode so far was how they used Otto Hightower. And I've always felt that the usage of him has been fantastic. And again, the arguments and the banters between characters here and where it sends off our characters is going to be very interesting for the rest of the season because Damon just fucks off as well, leaving Renera to be basically almost killed at the end. But the twins fight and then she says... And then once the twin wins, he ends up just killing himself. It, it, it's, it's devastating because that was one of her most trusted people. And I also love that we see that one girl. I cannot remember her name. She's a great actress. But Damon's little affair, how she lets her go. But then she stops once she sees the other twin. And I'm going to be interested to see how that dynamic now opens up into episode three. Because clearly she must have ran back and warned the other one. All interesting things there. Now, for me, a couple other notable things in here. I thought how they used uh, the sea snake and his wife. I think there could have been a little bit more there, and specifically some of the boat crew. Those moments feel a little bit wasted. I'm just waiting again to see where that goes. But it was interesting how the guy's looking for, for the shells and finds the crab, and then the, the dragon comes through, which is obviously, I'm assuming, the dragon that Renera sent to go watch King's Landing. All interesting to see how that pays off. We also get a little bit of cool conversation between Eamon and how he's feeling. Nothing most notably, but again, all goes towards his character. Who, Eamon, for the most part, while I also want him to die, is a very interesting character that I like following throughout this. This episode overall just establishes where our characters are at, how they're feeling now. And now after the first episode really much peaks up and says, yeah, we're probably going to go to war. Episode two just solidifies that more now that they sent someone to go kill Renera. And now I'm just fascinated more and more to see how this all comes to be. Where do our characters play off? What is Aegon going to do next? Is Allison going to continue being this fucking bitch? Is Sir Christian Cole going to eventually fucking die this season? Again, I might have read some of the books of Game of Thrones. I do not know all the lore for House of the Dragon. So this is one of those shows that I love piecing together and getting a new thing every week. Is this one of the best episodes of the entire show? No, I still think episodes one and two are not as strong as a majority of the stuff in the first season, but it is still piecing together, and I'm excited to see where the next episode goes. It's still one of those nice little watches. I can't say it's like the most mind-blowing thing, but if you're already in the House of Dragons, I can't imagine that you're not enjoying this. So definitely leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe button, and of course, until next time, stay classy.